So, hey, Miss Coquila, I'm telling you, I'm the worst technician. Thank you for dealing with all of that. Oh, well, I'm terrible. I'm really terrible. <laughs> well, I'm so glad. Um, finally, I think it's been at least a couple of years since we, we first met and had yeah, over, over some, over some uh, specific uh, conditions. I think uh, there was a little bit of a scuffle going on on my group about Osho. And there was some Osho devotees there that were, um, you know, basically taking over the group and everything was Osho, Osho, Osho. And I like to let everybody say whatever they want and, you know, quote who they like and do whatever they see right. fit. Um, but, <laughs> it, you know, I never really was a fan of Osho and uh, for various reasons, but I kept cringing and then it just got more and more. And finally, I just said, look, I was honest about it. I want to be as, you know, uh, easy to, to deal with as possible, but uh, enough of the Osho, I can't, it, it ruins it for me because for, for many different reasons, but please, you know, enough with yeah. the Osho. Well, and I got your a, site, so you certainly had the right to do that. Right. And, uh, you know, one of the reasons why I started it was because I, I don't like Osho and I, you know, I don't particularly like seeing his stuff everywhere. But again, you know, I don't know enough about the man. I just, you know, I'm not going to criticize. I'm not judging. Uh, but I know enough to know that. I. And, and where know, did I'm you get your best. information from? Well, uh, the first thing I saw from Osho when I, when I was a child was uh, uh, stuff about the ranch up, up in the Pacific Northwest. So obviously, you know, we did not have a great meeting. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was 60 Minutes and all of these people devoting, you know, everything to, to this guy who was, you know, <laughs> I mean, at best, you know, uh, suspicious in many ways. <laughs> Um, living in living in a mansion with all of his cars and all his devotees, yeah, and yeah, yeah, <laughs> are, are in the mud and and. But one of the funniest things was he was a guru, um, and uh, had this thing about the American word or the English word, uh, fuck, you know. And uh, he was talking about how funny the word was in English. And, Do you know uh, what? Was, I was at that lecture. I was, I mean, you, this happened in Pune and I was at that lecture and it was funny, you know, I mean, yeah. you know, but um, they made a big deal about it, but it's like, it was funny because he was using it as a noun and as a verb and as an adjective. Right. And he, was funny. he was very funny. Anyway, his lectures were extremely enjoyable and he was funny and he was very freeing. And uh, I just wrote in on the, this site, the site of Pune One, because there's still stories every day. But what's upsetting me even more maybe is that all these people that want to defend him are chiming in. And it's like, why are they even bothering? Why? And I finally wrote, look, if you had a good time with Osho and everything's fine, fine. But right now people are talking about things that really hurt them in their lives. Yes. And why would you defend him at this time? Right. You obviously have no compassion and love. He didn't teach you that, you know? So I finally, and I get really nasty answers, really nasty replies. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, and, they're, devotion, they're, they're devotees, if I may, real quick. They're, they're devotees. The devotees of Osho can be scary in, in, in a way. They're, they're definitely... Uh, exactly. Uh, you know, their responses and they're just the way they interact is, is spooky in a way. It's, it's really a red flag. Right. You know? <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's freaking me out. And uh, <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out. And there's several things I'm thinking, well, I think Norma Ray said something about, well, maybe, you know, uh, they were, they were part of it and they don't, they don't want to let it go. You know, they don't want it criticized. But the other thing is that 
Um, I, I finally wrote and said, you know, I was there for four years. I love Bhagwan. I went there, I listened to his uh, talks. Uh, his first talks were the Patanjali sutras, <laughs> yoga sutras, and very beautiful. And I tell you, I cried during these first sessions because I was Catholic and I had this horrible Catholic school and Catholic nuns and Catholic priests and all the guilt and sin and everything. And it was so wonderful to hear him speaking about uh, some spirituality and in a beautiful way, you know, as the sutras are beautiful. And uh, there's no cried. doubt that he, 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 there's no doubt that he had uh, the gift of, uh, of speech he had the, the gift of gab there's there's no doubt that he knew how to uh how to speak in front of an audience especially oh, a willing, absolutely he was charming a willing and, open audience. and we yeah. all fell in love with him and we all believed him and so i wrote this finally in the puna one site and i said you know i was happy i loved him i had a wonderful four years there and then when i came back to the states I met some of, I said, I knew a lot of people. When I came back, oh, I knew a lot of these people that had been at the ranch and I heard many terrible stories. I have a best friend who was, actually she was the guard of Sheila mm. and she was given a gun. And she said, <laughs> you know what? I came here to become enlightened. I, I'm not going to shoot anybody, you know, but she still, yeah. she, was, she was Sheila's guard. Yeah. And she would not want anybody, me to know that or anybody else to know that because they'll know who she is. And she was feared for her life by the end of the ranch, I'll tell you. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so she was very high up. She was always at the meetings Sheila would go and have meetings with Osho when he was in silence. And then there was a group of about nine or 10 people and she would talk to them. And this, my friend was one of these people. So she knew everything that was going on. So anyway, on my statement, I said, you know what? Those of you that had a good experience, fine. Um, but you know what? It wasn't him that did it. If you came out and you're happy and you're free and you're a spiritual person, that's because you had faith and trust and love and you worked hard, you know? Bhagwan did not do that for you. He might've been the catalyst, you know, but- Well, it's, it's interesting that you say that because I've, I've had a couple of people uh, like devotees, you know, want to uh, have a discussion with me insofar as, uh, uh, they say, why don't you just follow, follow the, you know, follow Osho? You don't have to do anything. I mean, that's what their attitude was. Essentially, um, just follow Osho, and he can do it for you. You yeah. don't have to do anything. Right. He, he can just, you know, get and, you. Uh, uh, he I didn't just do thought it, it was so because bizarre because these people are so angry and so nasty and yeah, have great. no compassion. And it's like I'm not surprised, but. Um, yeah, why are they even bothering to, to put things in? Why are they defending this man? And uh, he's dead a long time, you know? Yeah. So anyway, I, I also wrote in, this is before I wrote the nicer thing. I said, when he left, by the time he left the ranch, he was totally drugged out on that yes. laughing gas, totally. Yeah. And I yeah. know this from my friends, like I said. Oh, it was clear, it was obvious, yes. Yeah. I said, not only that, he was, he separated kids from their families right away at the ashram. He did tell people to have abortions. He told my friend to have an abortion or she couldn't stay at the ashram. And she did, she had an abortion. And then, and, but, and then but you did not. No, but and you then, know, and, they pressured and, me so much that I thought, well, I'm gonna ask him because I'm gonna have this baby. So I asked him, and the strange thing was, he said, yes, if you're ready to have a baby, you can have a well, baby. It was the way you had, you said, you, you didn't ask him, you said, I'm going to have this baby. I'm also having a baby, yeah, I right, don't know. Right. But my friend, who was close to all of the big people, 
she said, well, you were pretty new at the ashram and you weren't really one of them yet. And they could be sued for things like that. And so that was not, that was probably why he said it. And I'm thinking, well, he knows that I had this spiritual experience about it, you know, but. And, and but could you imagine being the, the one that just listened to him without questioning whether or not, because for you, it was like you were ready to be a mother. And here is a younger person, maybe not not as sure of herself and just listening to this guy. And then after the fact, years later to realize, wow, I just did that on somebody <laughs> else's instruction. That's exactly, insane. exactly. Yeah. I mean, a guru does not tell you to have an abortion. <laughs> it's just crazy. I mean, it, I, I, I don't get it. You know? No, and a guru does not tell you to have to be uh, sterilized. He told yeah. all these people, all these young people to be sterilized. Right. So and, I'm, uh, I'm listing all these things that he did and he allowed the sexual perversion to go on with the young children because he had separated them from their parents to begin with. And then these wow. terrible stories of him with these women coming in to service him. Okay, so I wrote all this. And I get these terrible responses. Oh, this is just gossip. That's what they said. You know, this is just yeah. gossip. You're just listening to gossip. And it's like, everybody knows these things are true. Right, right. You know? Yeah. yeah. So. It's, well, the, what, the thing about it was, is that the, the reason why it's, it's so it's so nice to talk to you today is because for years you weren't saying, I mean, you, you didn't want your name to be out there. You didn't want to uh, say these things out in front of people. And um, yeah, I'm so glad that you finally, you know, you've gotten that, that strength. And from what I understand, you spoke to somebody that, that you were at the ashram with originally when he was still Bhagwan and you've spoken to them recently and they let you in on some, some uh, horrible details from what I understand, is that correct? Well, yeah, I mean, I didn't know these things or I certainly would have come out with, I didn't know a lot of these things. I, I knew that he would, I mean, everybody knew that he was telling people to have abortions and so on. But um, yeah, I, I, I have to tell you this one thing that I, that I learned still when I was in Pune. Okay, so there was a prince from Germany that came to the ashram with his wife and daughter, right? So he was treated royally, of course, right? Here's a right. prince from Germany. Right. And he was living in Lao Tzu house. And I think he and his wife kind of separated at the ashram, but his daughter was there. And my son was one of the kids then. So he knew a lot of these kids. And my sister had come and she had kids. And uh, so anyway, Prince Charles and Di Princess Diane came <laughs> to Bombay for a visit, right. right? And Pune was not far from Bombay, not that far, train ride, right? So the prince went to visit them in Bombay and they're cousins, right? They're all right. German, right? And uh, when he came back, he was uh, teaching this little kids, including my son, karate. They all had their little- Who weight. was? The prince. The prince of Germany. Yeah. Okay. The prince who had come to the ashram, he was teaching the kids karate. So he was in the hall, big, the Buddha hall, teaching the kids. And he was called out to go and see Sheila. Who was the was, prince? Yeah. Okay. So he went to Sheila's. Now this I've never told anybody and we're recording and I'm a little hesitant, but anyway, it's the truth. So my friend, not the one I've talked about, but another friend came to me and said, Sheila just injected a needle into this prince. And she was scared because she had seen it. 
and she wasn't sure whether Sheila saw her see it or not. She worked at the ashram and she saw it. Wow. So the prince went back to teach my son and the other kids karate and collapsed. What? And went to the hospital and died. What? Yeah. Because they, they showed the thing on the documentary where Sheila's helper stuck that guy that was going to take over. Or right, whatever. right. This was so, years later. This was way in Pune before. That was before. So she was doing it way back in Pune. Yeah. Oh, my God. And Sheila herself did it. And so the parents came whether they were a king or queen or whatever, I don't know. I never saw them, but they came to Pune, of course, and they wanted to um, blame Osho. But Osho said, no, he had this uh, brain disease from birth. And okay. they said, no, he did not. And they wanted to have autopsy of his head. But in India, there's this thing where if you're dead, you can have your head crushed. I mean, this is a very horrible thing. And they did that to this prince. And Bhagwan said, because he had requested it. Yeah. Oh my God, before the royals got there? So they, That's incredible. they never could do that. Yeah. So there was nothing they could do. Oh my gosh. So my niece was there she was a good friend of this daughter and the daughter later was a flower girl at charles and diane's wedding wow yes so like that could happen nowadays I mean, I mean, it could, it definitely could happen. But um, as far as like the media would go bananas over something like that, wouldn't they? Well, we're in India now. Right. At that time. Yeah. And maybe, I mean, cause he had to leave. Do, do you know why he had to leave Puna so fast? Oh, and no, the reason that uh, get back. The reason that he was killed was because he didn't invite the prince and Diana to the ashram. Bhagwan had told him to invite them, but he didn't. And so when Sheila was doing her thing, she said, you know. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who was supposed to invite who to the ashram? The prince was supposed to invite Prince Charles. When he went to visit them in Bombay, he was supposed to invite them back to the ashram. Uh, and they asked him, did you do that? And he said, no, I wasn't gonna ask them to do that. And they tried to kill him for that? And they killed him. Yes. What? Yeah. What could possibly be beneficial? about that no i know no nothing well i mean what, what good would killing him do i, don't, I know. don't get it and i wouldn't know anything about it except that my friend saw it she saw it happen just like you're saying people saw the other happen yeah well that lady ended up yeah she uh uh sheila couldn't do it and uh she had her devotee this is the woman that was screaming in uh, the oregon state court uh uh the the, the, the oregon uh, state supreme court saying oregon is dead next america you know i mean they're gonna take over the whole country and all this crazy <laughs> stuff i mean literally she was really nuts i mean saying that in a, in a state supreme court uh well, simply over something that was so basic that could have been taken care of in the first place if they just would, you know, play ball with the locals and um, share the wealth. So well, I mean, imagine, okay, so you have this Bhagwan and Sheila was Indian and they go to another country, they go to America wow. yeah. and they do everything 
to try and get these people of antelope out. I mean, yeah. they're in another country. They they bought this fabulous yeah. big piece of land that was right. nothing, and they right. made a fantastic place. They worked hard. All these people worked hard. Yeah. And uh, all the sannyasins, some of them worked for years. They worked like uh, twelve and fifteen hours a day on yeah. this thing. And uh, but to go to another country and then they tried, they did poison, they did try to poison. That is just on. insane to go and get all the homeless people so that they can bolster the vote. Right, they exactly. Poisoning I mean, the, they did insane things and everybody it's just knows crazy. it, you know? And then the whole gun thing, you know, getting, I mean, you know, to you're when you go to a new country and you start buying up an entire town you know the best thing you know you could do is try to play ball in some way share the wealth be be inviting the worst thing i think you know i don't know much about osho but he definitely did not pick the right number two for that situation no it and, was the uh, wrong place to go to begin with you couldn't go to oregon it could go to california maybe you know would have been a little bit more legal liberal there now, because oakland was not i mean um oregon was not the place to go to begin with but they didn't know i mean they weren't listening to anybody else they were just uh looking at the money so right. yeah they, to, it was so that. cheap right well also here here's another thing I, well i think what it was is that it was so cheap and uh uh the taxes and they just thought that they were going to be able to go over to take take it all but um yeah, they could. Have, aside from all of that, you because that that's already well documented, as you said. You personally uh, saw and heard stories of ch children being taken to service Osho, and um, not Osho, not children with him, um, but some of the people that were teachers. And, and many of the people that were in charge knew it. In fact, I told you about my favorite therapist, such a beautiful man, and he was the, led the encounter group. Everybody had to take that group if they were at the ashram. And he was always there. He was the one, he lived in Lao Tzu house with Bhagwan and uh, a 14 year old girl he took to a hut and said, well, I never had a virgin before. 14 year old girl. Uh, and I was so, so this, shocked. The, this, the, so, and you saw this? No, this is what she wrote in this site, in this Puna uh, One site. Oh, uh, okay. Recently. Yeah. And then other girls said, yes, Tirtha was really a monster. A monster. He must have been 50 years old. Mm. You know? Well, I mean, yeah, I just can't, I can't understand it for one thing, but with Bob so, Wong, uh, oh, the stories are of other older women. I haven't okay. heard stories of him with children, although okay. I heard that there were some stories in Bombay, but I don't know. I haven't heard those. Okay. Well, okay. Uh, that's good. Yeah. At least, at least it's not that rampant. Um, I know that, uh, you know, I think, uh, I, I would like to know more about your experience. Like, for how long was that German prince there, for example? Oh, uh, we loved him. He was so great, you know, he was beautiful. Um, probably, I don't know how long, not too long, probably not more than a year. Oh, know? he had been there for a year. Yeah. And he was, and, and they killed him for not inviting them. Uh, that I see now what you're saying. So yeah. Prince uh, uh, Prince Charles and Princess Diana were coming to Bombay. Yeah, and he had been there for a while. They tried to get him to to kind of bolster their. Oh their yeah, name Bob a One bit. would love that the, the prince and the, uh, oh and, my gosh, you know, yeah, it'd be I like mean, going on Oprah or something. Oh yeah, I would <laughs> love that. He, I know, and there was somebody uh, on this. Puna one who said he never wanted to be worshipped and I'm like oh my god please give me a break <laughs> I said are you kidding he rode around when he wasn't even talking he rode around 
in one of his Rolls Royces so that everybody would get there and bow to him and everything. I said, oh, are you kidding me? You know, and another person said, oh, he lived a very simple life. And I'm like, what? You people are crazy. What are you talking about? A simple life. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I love the story you told about when he told when he when he had to go back to India and he had changed his name to Osho after all of that problems yeah. in the United States. Uh, he changed all the names on all the books, like bought yeah. all the books back, right. changed all the names and then all put the them back names. out there on the show. Yeah. From, I know. You know. So, yeah. What was I going to say about that? Um, yeah, he had a lot of uh, uh, offenses. He had a lot of court cases that were coming up. I don't know. Well, I think he probably asked to be killed. Nobody knows because everybody was out waiting for him to come out at lecture. This is when he was back in Pune. And this man came out and said, oh, Osho is no more. He left his body, blah, blah, blah. Oh, God. So the thing about the books and the thing about why some of these people are so angry is because they're making a ton of money. Right. They still have the ashram. They're making a ton of money. When you go to India, the bookcases are filled with Osho. Right. And it's so sad because you have the Upanishads, you have the Vedas, you have Aurobindo, you have Ramana Mahashi, you have all these masters and all these uh, rishis to read. And then you get bookcases full of Osho, you know? I, is it true that he had various different writers? He has like young writers or un, more unknown writers that might be hungry uh, that, that it, like he sees something that he likes. He is, it's like almost Andy Warhol's art factory where they would come, he would see what they wrote and then write his name to it and give them some money. And that's how they keep coming up with those show books. Now they're just putting other, just straight up other people's work, in, you know, in there and then just putting Osho's well, name on it. Most of the books, when I was still in Pune, I don't know what happened after, but most of the books were taken word for word. They were every, every uh, discourse in the morning was taped, every one, and then they would become a book. So every single day, <laughs> you know, he would write. Uh, and uh, yeah, so there were th thousands of them. I mean, I was there for a lot of the lectures and I also read books, many of his books, but I don't know um, what he, he certainly quoted all of the uh, great masters and everything. He would quote, quote them and uh, in part of his lectures and things, you know. But I don't know about what you're saying about the other things. But there's enough books out there. And uh, yeah, it's really sad. I, and what he's, I can't, what he says is inspirational usually, I have to say. I don't know about after he finally came out in Oregon and started talking again. I know that the first, I heard that the first time he came out, he started out the lecture after a year of silence saying, Hitler had the right idea. <laughs> in what respect? Well, I guess he wanted a perfect man or something. I don't know. I never heard oh more God. than that. I just heard that. And it's like, oh, my God. So yes. a lot of uh, young Jewish sannyasis didn't like that so much, I think. <laughs> Holy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think the FBI said the, the, the worst thing he could have done for himself is start speaking again once uh, his number two left. Uh, he accused her of murder and stealing all that money and everything else, which basically allowed the FBI just to come into the camp and investigate. Um, but yeah, there, there, there's a lot of scary things there. His devotees have, uh, you know, have said things to me that uh, were really, really off-putting and scary at times in so far as the, the amount of brainwash involved was was truly it and, and the thing is is that they didn't even hide what they were saying they wanted 
to be brainwashed and were saying they were happy for it, that they were happy that they were brainwashed in, in Osho and that it's the best feeling in the world and um, they could use Osho's words against anything I might say. And, and I said, yeah, but I don't, you know, I don't want to argue with you about no. anything, you know, no. I don't want to have a competition here. I simply don't understand, you know, the necessity to take over a social situation with, with one particular outlook. And uh, that's about as nice as I can get, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, I mean, it's, 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 it literally was, if I let the door open for it a little bit and they just pushed in and just took over oh, and yeah. I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and I think it's indicative of uh, just the entire, you know, they, they look, they see people that are asking questions and that's what really scared me. Um, they try to get me on a side against another side, you know, when somebody's clearly just asking a question, you know, and, and yeah. referring one person or another, or this person said that, or another person said this, I'm more like, well, this is how I feel, you know, and the Osho people would do their thing, but it wasn't enough that, yeah. uh, that, that, uh, you were having a discussion. It had to go to Osho, you know, and it, it, I was just like, this is enough of this. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and well, the thing about it was, is that they, they were fighting for the mind of that, that new, the seeker. They wanted them in the fold and they saw it as their duty as a devotee to Osho to get people that didn't really know the ground so well and 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 indoctrinate them now i've seen that you know oh, yeah. that's that really that i was like no we're, we're, i'm not doing this yeah and right. uh, we're not going to have that here right. but that's the extent of what i i knew of osha right away that it was not a scene that i wanted to see so you know. did you ever watch that wild wild country that yeah I, I i saw that uh but the, it was it was way back with 60 minutes i think um we're yeah, at, it was at, a long time ago. And I watched that and it's like whoever who those two men that did that, they actually knew nothing. I mean, I watched that whole video and they're talking about it. Did they ever show anything of Bhagwan except him riding around in the car? I, nothing. Right, right. You didn't yeah, know they were who very he was. easy on him. You didn't know what he was. You never saw him talk. And it was like, well, what a way to begin a, a whole video about him. You didn't know anything about him. Right. So all you saw were these people jumping around and being crazy. And OK, so when I watched that. At the end, when they're talking about. They're ready, they're ready. If the government's going to come in, they have their guns and they're, you know, yeah. right. They're ready. Yeah. And I said to my friend, I said, you know what it felt like to me? It felt like Bhagwan would have let this happen rather than leave. And she said, oh, yeah. I mean, that terrified me because it looked like he would have liked to have that happen, that, that they would defend him with their guns. <laughs> So they, we're talking a cult. We're talking a full force. You know, we're talking a cult, essentially. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And somehow or other, he tr he decided to leave, fortunately, because it could have ended up like that. Well, I think they, they arrested him. They arrested he, him. Yeah, well, he, he tried to leave and when they arrested him. Uh, I think his lawyer gave him the best advice he got legally speaking through that whole process you know these guys it's the federal government they've got you um you know if if you fight this they're gonna fight you until they get you out of here and they'll make your life a living hell until that day comes you might as well just say be done wipe your hands of this be done with it um the the money that they were saying the the money and the and the goods that uh he left behind I mean, we're taking his word for you because the money he was talking about was so low. It was such a little amount of cash. No, oh, I've still lost had this kind of Rolls Royces, 99 right. Rolls Royces, right? Well, and, and the thing was to me, though, 
who is to say how he funneled that money and where, you know, he's, he's, he's crying bloody murder, but he can't say it's too much because of the IRS and uh, their, you know, that status. And <laughs> so whatever he got out of, uh, you know, the fleecing of, of all of those people didn't seem to phase a lot of those folks. They still followed him back to India. So they well, the, they only got him on uh, illegal marriages or something. They didn't even something get him like that. Anything, yeah, you know. So uh, yeah, there were a lot of those that uh, would marry people from the state so they could stay there and so on. And yeah, there was that. And that's the only thing they got him on. They didn't get him on anything else, you know. So and, and then and, and, and that, that's really it's, that's that's something said about the American system in regards to religion. And things like that. All you got to do is say you're a preacher or a guru or something yeah, like that. And right. you really have to do some crazy stuff to, to have the government come down on you. Yeah, right. Uh, so that was <laughs> what all they could find. And then he tried to land in many different countries, Ireland and Greece, I think, and many countries. No one would have him. Of course, the U.S. told them not to right. accept him, you know. Right. So he went back to Pune. And uh, yeah, so you know what? A few years ago, my daughter is a is a very good at yoga, and she's been doing Iyengar type yoga for many many years. And they were having his daughter. He died now, but his daughter Iyengar's daughter was giving a special uh, class in Pune, and her my daughter's teacher had been trained by Iyengar in India. And so she was with him for many years and she still is. And he told her about this class and he said, uh, they need recommendations to go. And did she want to go to this class in India in Pune? It's funny because the, he, his, uh, he was in Pune, Iyengar. That's where his yoga institute was. So she said, yes. So I said, well, I'm going to go. I'll fly there with you. I haven't been back to Pune, so I want to go and see the ashram again. It's still there. But Bhagwan was dead by now. Osho was dead. But I wanted to see because I spent four years there, right? So I went. Well, first of all, you had to buy a, a maroon. We used to wear orange, but now you had to buy a maroon robe to, to, wear, to go in there. Okay, so I bought him a room robe. I went in there. How much is the robe? Oh, it was just, I bought it on the street, one of the streets. Okay. It wasn't much. Okay. Then I went there. It was beautiful. I waited outside in this beautiful place. And I waited a really long time because they told me I have to get an AIDS test, which I knew you can't go in without an AIDS test. So I sat there and there were people coming and going and ignoring me. And finally, somebody said, are you waiting for something? I said, yes, I'm waiting to go in. I'm waiting for my AIDS test. Oh, I'll come, come in, you know, so, I, but this took a long time. Okay, I got my AIDS test. I went in, um, it had expanded a lot. The big Buddha hall was still there that was built when I was there. Um, so I, I went to get a cup of coffee. That was the first thing I did. I went to the little snack bar. And so they gave me the coffee and they said, and I went to pay them and they said, oh, we don't take money. You have to go back to the place and get a, a receipt from there. And so it was like, oh, okay, I'll do that. And I went off with my coffee and it's like, I'm not going any place to get, I, I got my coffee, that's it. You know, I'm not right. <laughs> gonna go back to this place. So I went back anyway, and uh, they usually give tours, right? And I said, oh, I was here for four years and nobody cared at all about that, you know, that I knew Osho or anything. They said, well, we're really busy now. So we're gonna take you in this room and we'll give you this book. And I could also get on the video if I wanted and see a video about Osho and about the grounds and everything. Well, how, how, much did you, how well did you know Osho? How well did I know him? Yeah. Um, I used to have, I used to go every morning to his lectures 
probably almost every morning for four years. Of course, uh, I how had many my people baby. were there when you were there? Oh, um, it changed. We used to go and have his lectures uh, in the little, on his uh, porch, the Lao Tzu house. And maybe there were, well, I think there were like, 20 people when I went to get my name and uh, take Sanyas. Get out of here. And maybe 50 people at lectures in the mornings at so that he time. he would recognize you. Oh, yeah. He would always remember me when I would go. And, and then once in a while, I made an appointment to talk to him, like I did to ask him about having the baby and everything, right? And wow. uh, so I was getting in there very when it was. It was and then you know, by the time I left, when they built Buddha Hall, that filled a thousand people and there'd be a thousand people there. Wow. Yeah. That was, that changed a lot over four years, right? So anyway, I went back and I thought, okay, I'm going to go. Every place I went, it was, I couldn't bring my bag. I had to go back. I had to do this. I had to do that. I, it was just ridiculous. So then I wanted to see, uh, when I was there, Osho's father had died and I knew him and he was a sweet man and I knew the mother and the mother and father had their own room there, their own apartment. And they used to have bhajans on a Sunday morning and they would just play all this music and the two little old people would dance and, and I went there a few times. It was really, they were wonderful. Nice. But his dad died. And they had a really beautiful uh, place for him. And that, and that was the last place I went to when I was leaving Pune for good. I went to see his place. So I wanted to see his place. So this is crazy. So I went, I asked people where it was. Oh, you can find a map on this. You know, nobody was helpful in any way. You know, they you told can me buy a map. find the map. <laughs> oh yeah, right. So I, I pretty much knew where it was. I went out and I see two tombstones and one says, father of Bhagwan, father of Bhagwan. The other said, mother of Osho. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I'm like, what are you crazy? That's the craziest thing, you know? I'm like, oh my God, you know? So, um, <laughs> Freud would have a, uh, have a great time with that one. It was just, a, I know, <laughs> that's the craziest thing. You would think that they would just put maybe Bhagwan's real name or something, or that, right, you know, right. But it's like, no, father of Bhagwan. Mother of Osho. <laughs> wow. I would have loved to hear some of their music, actually. <laughs> I know. They were so cute. I know. One time I had been away in Goa because I used to go to Goa during the season. I didn't spend the whole four years there religiously because I had to get to the beach with my kids, right? Right. And I got back one time and saw the father. And he just saw me and namaste'd me. He was a sweet man, you know, so it right. was really nice that he recognized me coming back and everything. So I had wonderful time there. I had many, many friends. And uh, it was very joyful. We would have these big festival days. And people would come from all over. And uh, there was a lot of singing and dancing and uh, a lot of uh, festivities. So yeah, and his and his talks, his lectures were great, you know. And uh, yeah, we didn't know about any of the other stuff that was going on, and uh, it got worse, I guess, at the at the our Oregon ranch. But um, yeah, he really knew how to draw people in and how to convince people that he was enlightened man. Oh yeah, I read I read some of his stuff, and there's no doubt that he's a, uh, you know. It, but he's he's definitely selling that guru. I am he, you know, who oh, can yeah. bring you bring yeah. you to the to the eternal, whatever have you. Um, yeah. yeah, I never I never got any of that out of Lao Tzu at all. Um, you know, I mean, which is which is funny 
because uh you know i know some of the references uh osho has used and uh you know having having read some of some of those references his books lao Tzu being one of them i never got anything like uh follow some leader you know nothing like that uh, no. occurred to me after reading the book of the way uh quite the contrary the last thing that i would do is follow somebody in regards to lao Tzu. i mean that 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 is you don't even know if lao Tzu is a man or a woman no. Yeah, I mean, no. it, you know, it's just a ridiculous, you know, preposition. I know. And um, I, I don't understand. But at the same time, speaking to some of the, the, the devotees that I that I did speak to, I did, I, I do understand. I mean, I, I like to say I don't understand why they're like this or like that, but I think I do. And um, it's, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm reading the... Um... I told you that I was so upset by all of this these last couple of weeks that somebody gave me this book about Gandhi and it's so beautiful and he lived his life according to the Bhagavad Gita and uh, I, I just finished reading it again and it's so beautiful I mean between his book and knowing that he lived his life by complete nonviolence and taught all his people to be with him completely pure, nonviolent. And then I read the Bhagavad Gita and it's like, it is the most beautiful way to live. I mean, he's telling, Krishna is telling Arjuna how to live mm -hmm. and how to be, right? Well, yeah, I mean, we're, you know, that's, it's stories. Uh, what I got out of it was that there's beautiful stories that you can relate and, and you can relate to aspects of your life. Anybody with an imagination can see the the correlations. They they're just you know they're pointers. And, oh yeah, uh, yeah. You know, it's no, it's, just, very it's beautiful clear. in that respect. Very you know, clear. right? And uh, it's it's beautiful, but none of them, uh, as far as I could tell, say anything about following a guru no um it, no the guru it, is your your own being yeah that yeah. and it's also just so now, it's so strange how people can just like the buddha says don't follow me and he's got you know half of you know the, you know three billion people loving him you know it's great. not only don't follow me but kill the buddha on the path kill the buddha, right? right you know right and yeah. uh yeah and people will actually defend that no 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 what he means is <laughs> Yeah, no, <laughs> you know, and it's like you didn't even whatever speak. you think is the Buddha. It's nothing. Right. He's not it. You know, it's you. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And then my daughter, when she saw I was reading the Bhagavad Gita, she said she had the Patanjali uh, sutras. So I'm reading them, and uh, they're they're just beautiful. They're just beautiful. And this is what Bhagwan. This was my first lectures of Bhagwan and they are beautiful and they were beautiful when he was talking. Like I said, I was so touched and everything, you know, right. but they're not saying to follow anybody either right. <laughs> at all. Well, there's, you know? there's nobody to follow, you know, and that's no, the, the beautiful thing not. about it is. Yeah, that's right. There's, yeah, there's the, no oneness one of, the oneness of everything. Yeah. 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 And, so, you know, um, and it's a beautiful thing, you know, um, non-duality oneness all of that kind of thing because we we're basically saying the same thing um uh, about that i just just want right. to make that clear that i know what you mean and uh you you basically know what i mean we have different ways of going about it and uh or going about you know feeling good about thinking about this you know just experience of of the bliss i mean it, there's really nothing to want and nothing to need or nothing to do it's, it's just amazing and perfect and in every way um accessible by just you know to, to shut off your, your belief systems and and just literally enjoy what appears yeah. you know there is no i know way. and really true gurus they don't want you hanging around they yeah. you know they want you to get it right and go, go out and enjoy yourself you know? yes, yes yeah it's beautiful. like don't why are you following me you know just 
get it and go off and live your life, you know? And, uh, and, and, yeah. and, and, you know, that's, that's something about some gurus take advantage of, and it's an age old thing within that illusion of time and space, but there's always this, this epic tale of, of gurus that abuse their position and and basically the the more successful they are the more blatant they are about it they will literally tell their followers you want me to seduce you you want me to hypnotize you because you don't have to think then yeah i can do it for you you don't have to do this or that but the thing is is that you don't need a guru to do that you don't need a guru to shut your mind to to realize that you're not even thinking it's not you doing anything and so you know and so the whole the whole it's so funny because it's so simple that um people <laughs> just can't can't accept it no you know, that i mean you don't have to do anything they all say and they i they really do say this is you're all enlightened i yeah. mean but moji says this all the time and right. when you when you finally see it you're gonna laugh and it's so true it's like <laughs> You already have been there. You're already there, yes. right? You're already looking out from your eyes, you know. Yeah. And you're uh, already there where there is no there there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So um, what was I going to say? I don't know. But anyway, well, yeah. you you. I think when I interrupted you, I think we were talking. You were saying something in regards to. Um, I interrupted you with the guru talk, and you and you were saying something on the lines of uh, what gurus say in regards to uh, telling telling seekers, you know, that they're already enlightened, or yeah. or enlightenment is already what is. So yeah, oh, I know. I wanted to say. Um, so after I came back and I I left Bhagwan, mm-hmm. um, of course, like I said, I continued. I'm interested in the spiritual things, right? So I'm going to read Eckhart Tolle and things like that, you know, and that was great. I was happy when his book came out because I hadn't read anything. So then I went to India again many times. And one time I was there with my son. He was grown up now. And we were there. And uh, there was a man from Brazil. Somebody told us, oh, you have to go and listen to this man in the morning. So we knew these friends that were telling us to go. So we went. And I was so surprised because it was a man sitting in the front in his chair and all these disciples. And there was a whole group of musicians. And we listened to the talk. It wasn't like I really fell in love with this guru at all. Um, I listened to the talk, it was fine, but what I loved was the music, and it was like, this is many, many years after, this is just about, oh, I don't know, 20 years ago, maybe, and I'm like, it's still happening, you know, I was so disillusioned with Bhagwan, but I thought, oh, it still goes on. Yes, of course. I was really interested, so I was with him, and I'm we were only there a short time that, that year in Rishikesh. And then I went back the next year and I would go to his lectures and I made a lot of friends. It's what's wonderful thing is that you, you get to meet these people who are, uh, you think anyway, spiritually minded <laughs> yes, and, uh, and the music was great. And uh, we would sing and it was just a wonderful thing to be back with a group of people like that again so this went on I a couple of years I was there uh maybe three it was very very nice the wonderful thing we did there was a kumbha mela in 2013 and a kumbha mela where 900 million people go every year every time it's like every 12 years right And uh, this guru organized a group of us, 200 of us, to go and camp out at the Kumbh Mela, right on the river between uh, the two rivers that meet 
the Ganga and the Ramuna, Yamuna, whatever. I forget. And uh, so we went. I was the oldest person there. <laughs> Uh, not the uh, oldest of the millions, but the oldest of the 200 people, right? Nice. And the youngest was 18. So this was 2013. So I wasn't 80 yet, but anyway. And it was cold. It was winter. And we were in a tent. And you had to get up and walk a long way at night to the bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> and it was zero degrees, right? Right. <laughs> And there was music and noise and speakers all morning, noon, and night. I mean, it was just crashing in on you because there are millions of people there, right? right? And then there were these sacred days when you would go for a swim in this river. And uh, we would all get in these boats and go out in the river and go for a swim. And <laughs> it was an experience. It was an incredible experience. So right? what you're saying is, is that after your after your Bhagwan experience, uh, you took a little hiatus, got got back into it and started going back seasonally. I mean, you yeah. were talking to me as like every other year you went back for a few months. Or... Yeah, I was going every year. <clears throat> after uh, I met this person. And then uh, after the Kumamela, oh, I know what happened. This is, this is funny. <clears throat> I went to lecture, it was Easter morning, right? And, the, uh -huh. and we were just back from the Kumamela and it was uh, warm and nice because we went to, um, where do we go? Went somewhere else after that and camped out anyway. We got back to the ashram. Uh, this the guru comes out. Would you say ashram? What ashram? This is the ashram in Rishikesh. Who's, who's ashram? This is, uh, what was his name? I didn't really want to say his name because I don't want. <laughs> okay, don't worry about it then. Don't worry about All it. All right. And so he comes out nothing at all about what we've been through 200 yeah. of us doesn't say anything about it we had all had kind of trips getting there and getting back and everything right right okay so he he has people ask questions right mm -hmm. so they write the questions and then he's reading this question right and the question is um my boyfriend told me last night that he's only with me to so that I wash his clothes and cook for him and have sex. Okay, I just got back from the Kumbamela. It's Easter Sunday morning. There are a lot of Brazilians there because this is a Brazilian man. They were all raised Catholic. He was raised Catholic. I'm sorry, I am not Catholic now, but Easter Sunday morning means something to me. Right. It always has. So as soon as they read this letter, I stood up and I left. You were cold, hungry, tired. No, it was Easter Sunday morning. I went and I sat by the Ganga, the Ganges River. What was it that upset you about it? I don't want to talk about somebody's sex boyfriend. life. <laughs> what? That's not what I'm doing. I don't want to talk about what? You're going to talk about some nasty letter. Uh, are you kidding me? This is not why I'm went through Kumbamela and everything, you know? It's like, it's Easter Sunday morning. You don't have anything to say about Christ rising, right? <laughs> Right. So, I mean, so and what happened then? The so, is, uh, this and, is so, so and, what happens then? And that was the end of that guru. Uh, oh, okay. okay. So, and I told you about the next guru. I'm, I'm a sucker. No more. But anyway, okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> three is enough. So then um, I went to a different place. I went to Tiruvannamalai, which is near Chennai, which is Southeast India. And oh, uh, every season they have all these people, all these gurus come from everywhere. They come from the States, they come from Europe. 
and they come from India and they they have uh, there's a lot of a beautiful mountain there that's really like a Shiva mountain. And uh, it's just a powerful place. So I met this man from Germany, right? And very powerful, very beautiful. And I go to his lectures a couple of years. I go on a retreat with him and his group. His group was beautiful. They're all very loving people. Okay. Oh no, so the other one I didn't tell you about. Okay, I left that one from Brazil. Later, it comes out that he was sleeping with his best friend's wife. <laughs> this guru. Typical. So the Brazilian guy, you found out later on, he was sleeping with his best friend's wife. Yes, and the best friend was doing his interpretations of his lectures. I mean, that's how but this has happened before that he was with his wife, but they went to see him one time mm -hmm. because they were having marital problems. Mm -hmm. And then what he did was started sleeping with his wife. And so, but I found that out, it's like, oh my God. So he lost a lot of his disciples when that came out, right? Right. <laughs> okay, so then I'm in the next one at Tiru. And, uh, he was supposed to come the last two years that I went there, but he never he never showed up. But he sent somebody else and they were try, trying to push me to go to their boring morning <clears throat> lectures. And it's like, no, I have a friend here. She came to hear this other man. He's not here, but I'm gonna spend time with her. And they were like, oh, well, he wants you to be here. And it's like, no, no, I just do what I Not want. Not enough to be there himself, huh? Yeah. So anyway, um, about a year ago, right after the, um, well, actually, it was sometime after um, the whole COVID thing happened, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so he was, he started having Zooms. And I thought, oh, I haven't seen him in a couple of years. I'll get on a Zoom, right? So he asked me, so how are you doing, you know? And I said, well, it's a little bit difficult here because we have COVID. At this point, there were 90,000 only Americans who had died of COVID. I said, right. 90,000 Americans have died. And my cousin died last Friday. And I'm, this is Monday I'm talking. I'm talking about my cousin had died Friday. So his response was, oh, you can't believe everything that you read. You don't know about these things, you know, blah, blah, blah. Cousin, and by the way, I have a retreat coming up, right? My cousin had died. Yeah. I mean, she was my age. We were friends for 77 years, right? And right. my cousin dies and he's telling me, I don't know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, that was bad enough. But he went on to be talking about later about Osho. I think I told you this. Osho. And he said something like, Osho was a man who was trying to go beyond Jesus. Osho was a man who was trying to go beyond Jesus. And this is this guy that, uh, this is the third guru. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh my God. Did you tell him <laughs> that Osho was your first guru? And so it was like, okay, well, I guess I'm not following him. I'm not a disciple of him anymore. Somebody's trying to tell you something. <laughs> and the sad thing is I had told him because he had been talking favorably about Osho when I was at one of his lectures, right? And I told him, I said, well, I was four years there. And I would do some research before you start because I know many things that were not good about him. I didn't really want to come up with a lot in front of his dis disciples, you know. Right. So I wrote to him and I told him some of the things. Right. Uh, enough things that you would not want to say he was a man trying to be yeah. right. more than Jesus. So I think if he listened, 
I'm his disciple, I'm his follower, his student, he called us. And he doesn't even bother listening. And he goes on to say that, you know. So right. I'm now in the midst of writing him a letter to let him know that now I have proof, you know. Right. <laughs> because I don't want him going around telling people that Osho is a man like Jesus. Well, you you never did get to your proof. Well, I mean, you never did get you. You said you you, you talked about the German prince. Now, is that what you were saying? Is the proof? No. Well, you... I'm going to tell him about that because he's German. He can find out that easily enough. That him. would be easy enough to check. Yeah. But what? But what about? I mean, as the far as right as, now, as far as the, the German prince dying at the ashram. But, but the proof is the uh, Puna one. All these stories that are coming out. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And that, and that uh, I was under the impression that you talked to somebody that you personally knew while you're in Pune, and you talked to them recently, and they let out uh, some more things that you were you weren't aware of while you were there, and um, that's what I thought you were saying. But what you but essentially what you're saying is you got into it with the people at the Osho website, and uh, and that made you mad enough to verbalize yeah i mean i found out a lot of the okay. i didn't know about the little kids being abused and everything and yeah okay. i didn't even yeah. know about all these women servicing bhagwan and stuff and uh, yeah so so but well, I, so, but so so we just just to be fair to the osho people we're talking about you found people on the internet that are saying things that you know they're they're, they're, they're accusing him or saying that they personally have gone through or their children have gone through things with Osho and the Osho uh, ashram back in the day before he be, or before he became Osho and after. And uh, what yeah. what I'm saying is is that you know we can't substantiate that obviously, um, but uh, the, I mean, you know, it's it, 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 it no matter how many people believe something, it doesn't make it true. But when you have one or two or three or four accusations, okay, you're rich, you're powerful, you're a target. But when you start getting into the hundreds, you yeah. know, I mean, yeah. come on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it should have been enough what I told him already. And I also, when I told, wrote to him, I said, if you want me, I know a lot more. If you want to know more, you can let me know, you know, but, right. but uh, I, I feel now I'm going to tell him, well, you lost me when we had this Zoom because, and this is what I know now, and you can check out the uh, Prince thing as well, you know, right. but I feel like I should tell him because he's very powerful and I don't want him going around telling people that Osho was greater than Jesus. Right. And, and, and unfortunately, you know, uh, just as I found out when I tried to talk to the Osho people at the group, uh, in my own experience, uh, they they do not suffer criticism well uh, no. <laughs> at all. They either don't believe you, they act like they don't hear you, or they just talk right over it, or they oh yeah, or or they essentially call you know attack you, yeah. flies, and then or and and then, and also they will say uh, they'll shrug their shoulders and and say yeah you know stuff like that happens um so there's a lot of times they don't even you know try to defend it so and and then and because he is a holy man or whatever they want to say and uh you know that's that's you know i pretty much uh see enough when i had with that kind of attitude you know and if, regardless of what kind of man osho was i you know i i see no i see no reason to uh promote it um for no. all of these reasons you know and it's um so in any case what i wanted to get at here is how you really helped me that day because there was i knew i knew a few people but when you messaged me and said thank you i was in the midst of fighting 10 of these people i mean they were uh. coming hard and you really gave me the uh, energy and the strength <laughs> to, to, to say no and yeah. uh, when you when you when you said that, uh, no, I personally have seen this. Uh, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Abuses. No, yeah, that's way different than a reporter or or uh, some you know some random uh, uh, 
you know, uh, uh, documentary. When you meet somebody that, that or like you and I have, had already been speaking for a year up at, at that point, and I had never yeah. heard anything about it yeah. until that day, and, and, yeah. and it really did help me. I, I know, I was so happy to see that you said that. It's like, oh, thank goodness, you know, thank goodness, somebody. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. I uh, literally have had them um, want me to um, do like a battle with, uh, you know, one of their region people or whatever and you know what i'm not above talking to somebody you know but i, I tell them pretty much straight up you know what i think yeah. before we yeah, and we don't seem to ever get off the ground too fast i mean yeah. nobody yeah I, you know i'm not i'm not gonna waste a lot of time no <laughs> no exactly <clears throat> yeah so yeah so even while all these stories were coming out on puna one um, a couple of things came out on Facebook with pictures of him and beautiful sayings. And I wrote and I said, well, I don't know if you know it or not, but right now he's being accused by many young girls and so on, you know, because it's still coming out. You know, I hate to see it on Facebook. It's like, oh, you know, it's like, no, I don't want to see him praised anymore. I would like to see that whole horrible Pune place in, in India gone and all those horrible books <laughs> taken yeah. off the shelves you know yeah. <laughs> when, when you were you when you were describing going through the going through puna it kind of reminded me of like the disneyland like lines where they have you go through the the stalls and everything you had to pay with tickets and all oh, of that yeah, kind of stuff awful it was really awful <laughs> commercial is like a my coffee anyway <laughs> <laughs> and oh, so ball. my ticket would keep me there for the whole day and i left after an hour or so it was disgusting so mother of mother of father of bhagwan mother of osho <laughs> well see now you you got me you got me interested because now i really want to check that out i want to find out if they if they ever recorded any of their little jams and you would think that they would have Osho would think, hey, I could sell this, you know. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, that would be beautiful to just have, you know, have the parents of Bhagwan, you know, having a little tea and symbols or whatever they did. Oh, about, no, they wouldn't have recorded their things. Uh, you know, I had this, I had a very strange experience, I just remembered, with the mother. Um, one day I was friends with the guard that was at the back gate. I had known him from Goa and uh, he was from Australia. He was a good friend. And uh, <clears throat> I was talking to him at the back gate one day and he said, you know, Bhagwan's mother and father are coming to stay at the ashram and they're coming today. And I said, really? He said, yeah, actually I have to go now because I'm going to uh, have to meet them and bring them to their room. I said, well, I'm coming with you. So I had my baby in my arms and I walked with him and I see this woman, she's walking. She's walking and she's looking at me. It's his mother. And she suddenly stopped and stared at me. Stop walking, stop following John stopped and looked at me and stared at me and then my son was with me and he said mom did you see that she recognized you that's just what he said he was seven years old I said I know and then the father was behind her and uh like I said they had their little jams on Sunday mornings I went a couple of times but there were a lot of Indian people there that would join in so but that so you're was, saying you you had uh, you and uh, Bhagwan's mother had uh, kind of a reflective moment where you're saying you've seen each other in past lives and stuff like that something 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 like it was that. something I mean that's what I felt at the time it was like I was stunned and she stopped I love it with the, the I love yeah. it I love it when the babies catch up it's almost yeah. like the pets the, the like like my dogs and and then children you know, when when I have 
a moment, you know, clarity, and it seems to click with the children and the dogs. You know, somehow my dogs understand something. Oh yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? I it's, it's so surreal. <laughs> but yeah, um, but yeah, like only you, the people that that shared the moment with you, the children and the dogs get it. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's very true. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So. Oh my God. So this is really fun. <laughs> I, I, I actually needed, um, at first I thought, oh, do I want to talk more about it? And it's like, I really went through a lot these last couple of weeks. So I was really very, very sad. I know a lot of the, the bad guys and I know a lot of the children because they were children who grew up with my son and he knows. And so a you're lot saying of them. that you know these people yeah. online. So it's not just random people on Facebook, but right. people that you knew at the ashram at the time yes. or and throughout your life. And yeah. they are telling you that their children were abused yeah. by teachers and higher ups in the ashram yeah. where, Osho, where Osho was the guru. And I'm shocked. And uh, I mean, I was even shocked at the women with Bhagwan. I, it's so gross, you know, it was just sad. And uh, their stories are sad and they're feeling really uh, stupid and used and uh, betrayed and everything else, you know, so. Well, yeah. who knows? I mean, there's a lot of books that have been written about these kind of things. Has any of these people printed anything? Are there any names that, that yes. have come out that want people to know? Could you yes. tell us a couple I've of the I've read names? at least five books. Oh, okay. One of them was from Shiva, and Shiva was his guard who was at every darshan standing with him while he spoke, every lecture, every, gar every uh, darshan. Okay. And he wrote a book, and what, he, what happened with him, he went to Oregon, huh. and they had them working. He was working in construction, and many, many, many hours and very difficult work. And he got sick and uh, wanted to leave and they wouldn't let him leave. And they said, no, you can't leave. And um, by the way, my, my baby's doctor, not the one that delivered her, but the doctor that took care of her after she was born, he left in the trunk of somebody's car he escaped from there. Really? So Shiva, yeah. People, Shiva, this is back. This is back before Oregon. This is in Oregon. He left in a oh, trunk in of somebody's Oregon. car. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then Shiva's in Oregon working. He's sick. They won't let him leave. He finally leaves. He's I I think he's a something like a chiropractor or something, but he has his uh, certification. He's a doctor. Well, they notified, they followed him around. They notified every place so that he would not get certified again and not get a job. Oh, okay. I mean, and he wrote this book and it's called The, the God That Failed. The God and That Failed. And it's by Hugh somebody, his name is The God That Failed. And I read that book and that would be enough to tell you of things. That was right. horrible. I read another book. Was, would that friend. be the doctor that was performing the abortions? No, no. Okay. So yeah. you said the doctor. The doctor that was performing the abortions was uh, Indian. He was in Pune. He had his Okay, that guy stayed clinic. back in Pune. So, it so was this is, uh, yeah. So this okay. is his guard. And uh -huh. he, he was a, a doctor, a chiropractor, something like that. Uh, okay. And he okay. wrote this book, The God That Failed. <clears throat> then... I read another book of this woman who was my friend and oh, it was just really terrible things that went on at the ranch, just things they had to do. And it wasn't anything like the um, abuse, physical, uh, sexual abuse, but there were really bad things that happened. And she did write about the poisoning of the thing. That's just crazy. And then at the crazy. end of the book, and my son also read this book because he knew her. At the end of the book, she says to her husband, I don't think it was really 
Osho. I think it was Sheila. Right. right. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I read yeah. this whole book. She went through all this stuff and she still didn't want to believe it. Well, the crazy thing is, she was one that just wrote in again and said, and now it looks like she finally knows that it was Osho and not, you know, it, but right. before she didn't know. And I was like, well, thank God. Apparently yeah. she's written a couple more books, but I read the book I read, she was still, yeah. But anyway, she's like, no, she's trying to tell people, no, these stories are true. I was there. Okay, I read that book. I read another book by a young boy. He had been young boy in Pune. He wanted to see, oh, I guess he was in um, Oregon. So the kids were separated from their moms. I don't know how old he was, eight, nine, 10. He used to jump up, jump up over this wall to see his mom because he never could see her and he wanted to be with her. And this is how he would see her. She was working on the other side of this wall. Anyway, they transferred him to an ashram in Germany because there are Osho ashrams everywhere. The first night, he didn't speak German for one thing. <clears throat> the first night, the kids all decided to have a pillow fight, but they put rocks in the pillow and they threw one at his head and his head is bleeding. This is the first night that this little kid is separated and from his mom and has gone to Germany. So this wow. is what happened to kids. So this boy, when he was grown up, he committed suicide. Really? Yeah. At what age? I don't know. He, my, my son knew him also, but he was older. Yeah. Did your son or your daughter, or did your son ever have any trouble? No, and he would have told me because I was with him. I wasn't working at the ashram, leaving him with the ayahs and everything, you know, but no, he didn't. They know who to pick, but they, you know. Yeah. yeah. But, okay, so I don't know if you know that Vivek, his Bhagwan's woman, the one that he had the other woman make love to in front of him, right? Vivek was her name. She lived with Bhagwan. <clears throat> we didn't think he was celibate. We thought he and Vivek were a couple, right? And he told this whole story about how he knew her in her last life. And when she was dying, he told her he would come and get her as the next life. And so um, she was with him for all the years that I was in Pune, the four years, and before that, she was with him in Bombay. So she was with him all that time. And then she went to the ranch. Well, later she committed suicide, mm -hmm. his woman. And that's a fact everybody does know. So, so then I read another book. So I read the, the God That Failed, and I read the little boy's book growing up at the ashram or whatever it was called. And I read Satya Bharti's book, the one who didn't think it was <laughs> Bhagwan, but Sheila. And I, the woman that tried to kill that doctor, I read her book. And really she was like, she was on this um, program, the wild, wild country. Oh, yeah. she thought she was doing a wonderful thing. She thought she yeah. was Joan of Arc, right? She right. thought she was that indoctrinated that she thought she was really doing something. So my other friend who was also at this meeting when Sheila was trying to find out who was gonna kill this man, my friend said, I'm not gonna kill anybody. I didn't come here to kill anybody. Right. Well, they put her at the medical center and gave her drugs and kept her in there for a while. That's what happened to her. So sure. when she spoke up at the meeting, she was whisked away and yes. drugged. Yes, yeah. And you're talking about the one that happened in the documentary where Sheila's friend, the crazy lady, ended up, I think she ended up doing eight years for that. But yeah, that guy didn't die. But yeah, he was a real charismatic guy from... Uh, oh yeah, he didn't die. 
and they were afraid that he was going to kill Bhagwan or something. I don't know. It was crazy anyway. And she did do some years in prison. And then her son, who was also a friend of my son, he died. He had caught something from an older woman who molested him. Well, who I guess he was 14 or something, you know, so I, I don't know if it's still called rape, but a yeah. woman. And he got some kind of disease and he died from that. Wow. This is a friend of my son's. Yeah. I know. So she was let out of prison to go and see her son. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, who was let out of prison? Her, uh, the woman who uh, tried to kill that doctor. Okay. Yeah, right. she was in prison okay. for a while. But then they let her out and they let her stay out. They figured she'd been punished enough. So. Well, yeah, I'm, 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 you're, I, so you're not conflating two different stories. You're saying that Sheila was involved with the, the, inter, with the injection. Somebody you know saw Sheila's, Sheila in, herself yeah. inject the right. German prince and he died two days later. And this is over the uh, uh, Charles and Di thing when they came to Bombay. He wouldn't right. ask him to come, so they killed. So Sheila herself killed him. But then years later in the Wild Wild West thing, th this ties into that <laughs> scenario where that they had that meeting and the one girl decided that she would do it. She and would they do let it. her out after eight years, I yeah. think ten years, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, something like that. And yeah, she's a. Uh, and uh, she said it took years, eight years, at least before the 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 totality of the the grab or the hold that uh, Bhagwan had on her, Rocho had on her. Uh, she, she said it was eight years before I could say I'm wrong, you know, or th this this was clearly, oh, you know. Yeah, it's crazy. You know everything that happened there. She says I was in eight years uh, in jail for eight years before I could finally say, "Wow, I this, well, I, made a I know." I read her book, and she and her daughter was molested by an older man, and she didn't really? know anything about it. She yes. didn't know anything about that. No, 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 no. Uh, I, I think there's yeah, there's a lot. There's obviously so there's a lot just there. uh, you know. So I did read four or five books, and. Uh, about people that were close to him and uh, right. that I knew that I believed, yeah. So it's sad. And like I say, I got a lot out of it when I was there. I understand why people were in love with him. Uh, he had us all hypnotized. He did hit, when I was in Pune, I read about his family and how they were worried. They didn't like it because he was very into hypnotism. Yeah. And they used to use it on them, and right. they, they they didn't like it, you know. And uh, I think every day coming out at lecture, and he called us all his gods and goddesses, and I and I think he just hypnotized everybody, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think you're really good at it. But yeah, uh, yeah. Well, this has been awesome. I have to go and order lunch for me and my uh, in-home health healthcare giver. <laughs> I know. So thank you. It has been really good. It was good for me to be able to talk to somebody about it. And uh, yeah. let me ask you this: if, if if I do get a response from this, uh, and, uh, being if I do get some Osho people that want to talk to you, do you want to talk to anybody from Osho, the the Osho sect? Not particularly. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know what? I don't blame you. You know, yeah. they think yeah. I, I don't have the energy. You know, yeah. <laughs> no, enough is enough. Yeah, I'm so glad that you're getting it off your chest and you can free yourself of this, this, uh, this, just terrible. I know. Now I have for... one more thing. I have to write that letter to that other guru. And uh... oh yes, yes. Yeah. Please <laughs> let me know how that goes. Are you I coming will. to the meeting on Monday? I probably won't hear from him, but I'm going to write it anyway so that he doesn't go around spreading false news about Osho. Well, you got <laughs> you you to Jesus. Gotta, yeah, you got to do it. I mean, if, if, if that's what's going to make you feel better. 
uh, regardless whether or not he he actually right 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 wants uh, to come back. Um, you got you gotta say. I gotta let you gotta him let me. You gotta let me read that. Yeah, and I yeah, I will, and I'm gonna tell him. I don't know if he knows that I'm not a follower anymore, but I have to, you have to tell him why. <laughs> oh please, yeah. You let me let me read that. Are you gonna be at the meeting on Monday? Yeah, I hope so. I okay, well, to. I, I I hope if not this Monday, next Monday we could read that letter. <laughs> Well, it might be long, and it probably has a lot of things I already told you, but yeah. Well, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll touch base on it well, anyway. Poor Joe, he didn't want to hear anything about it, right? He's like, "Can we talk about something else?" Yeah, he <laughs> he yeah he. I think uh, yeah, yeah. I I I contacted him, and he understands that it wasn't personal, but yeah, he's got he's got a different take on 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 things. So yeah, yeah. but so, uh, yeah. that's okay. <laughs> Joe's gonna be fine. He's he's great. He understands it's not personal. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Um, All right. But well, thank you, Coquila. This has been amazing. I really thank appreciate you. you giving me your time. I'm so glad we finally could make it. Okay, thanks a lot. Love you, Howard. I love you, <laughs> Coquila. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye bye.